back to Gold Seek TV. I'm Vanessa Collette, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Jeff Clark, the Senior Analyst at the Hard Assets Alliance. It's great to see you, Jeff. Great to be here again. Now, Jeff, what in the world is <laughs> happening with gold? Very good question. What I think is happening right now, most recently here, is that gold has been the victim of a drive-by shooting. <laughs> because I don't think there's any fundamental reason why gold should be going down. All the reasons we all bought gold are still in play. So it's something else going on. I think the most recent thing that's been going on is the Chinese stock market crashing. Mm. And just like in 2008 when our market crashed, it was a liquidity event. They needed to raise funds to cover you know, other investments and other short positions or whatever they had, margin calls. And so that's probably what's going on. So I. I I think there's a lot of downward momentum with gold right now. Uh, that's kind of obvious, but I think it's it's nothing that's core fundamental to the reasons we all own gold. It's it's a temporary or transient thing that's happening mm -hmm. right now. So you haven't lost faith in the yellow metal? No, not at all. I mean, all the reasons that we we own gold are still there, are still in play. They're all still valid. Uh, eventually, something is going to play out. It could be something simple and small, like maybe a. a a, a, a failure on the COMEX to deliver, or it could be something big, uh, the unsustainable debt that we have, or the U.S. dollar faltering, something big like that. Or what scares me even more is it's something that none of us are even talking about, the old black swan event right. that catches us all completely off guard and gold shoots up again. I hope it's not that because that, that would be very bullish for the gold price, but it also would mean life would be a lot tougher. So. Right. But the bottom line is, the gold market, like a lot of other resource markets, cycle. Mm -hmm. We're in a down cycle. It is apparently not over yet. Um, but it's going to come back because these markets do cycle. And there's a lot of core reasons why you still want to be long this market. Now, would you call what happened like a flash crash or you know, what happened um, the day that it kind of fell to that resistance point at 1080? What, what would you call that? Uh, it just blew right through it. I think it was more of a selling pressure event, mm -hmm. probably caused by the, the uh, Chinese stock market crashing. And so they had to liquidate and, and cover, and they used the gold to do that in some cases. And so that's what's going on. So it could be something else, but the bottom line is right. we're still in a downward environment. It's still a bear market. But the interesting thing is this is the uh, second longest bear market in modern history now for gold. It's also the second steepest in history for gold. So clearly we're getting closer to the end of this thing than closer to the beginning of it. So the message is we, we have to hold on. We all bought gold for very specific reasons. Those reasons are still in play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, at some point it's going to cycle back up and there'll be another uptrend. There'll be another bull market, just like there has historically many times in the past. Do you think that gold still has its status as a bellwether? you know, for the health of, of the economy or the health of the global economy? That's a traditional view, and a lot of people still look at it like that, and to a certain extent, that's true. When the economy is doing well, why do you need to own gold? When the economy is doing poorly, well, we need to own more gold. So, but there's a lot of other factors that can play in other than just the health of the economy. It could mm -hmm. be <clears throat> some kind of debt situation, some kind of something with the dollar. Um, it could be... Uh, you know, our fiscal situation. You still have none of the G20 that can balance a budget. None of them, still to this day, cannot do that. These kinds of things are completely unsustainable. Mm -hmm. And again, those may not turn into be the next catalyst for gold, but they're, they show us that there are elevated risks in the system right now, financially, monetarily, um, fiscally, economically. And so there's a lot of reasons why we still want to stay long. I want to talk about China's opacity in terms of mm -hmm. declaring how much gold they actually have. It almost seems like it's against their own self-interest to declare a high amount, you know, because they won't be able to accumulate it at the same rate. So what do you make of the recent announcement? I think that's the proper way to interpret it. I did predict that, that China was going to declare an upgate, updated gold reserve announcement before October because they want their currency to be in the IMF basket. Right. I predicted it was going to be more like 4,000 tons. Obviously, it was way off. Mm -hmm. um, I was right that they did announce, and I, I think that they had to. Uh, but when you look at the amount of gold that's been imported into that country, 
when you look at the amount of buying that's going on over there, when you look at the, the amount domestic of production too. domestic production that, for the most part, doesn't leave the country, and then you look at the physical withdrawals from the Shanghai Gold Exchange, those are up 30% more than they were this time last year, and last year was a record year. So clearly, there's a lot of physical buying still going on in that country, and that's all bullish for gold. I, I think it's still there. So if, if their interest is to accumulate a certain amount of gold, and they're not there yet, that probably explains why they announced a, a smaller amount, because we know they have much, much more gold than what they announced. And what that means, if that, if, if that amount is actually correct, that just means there's more people in the country that own more gold than we realized because we know there's a lot of gold in that country. Right. How much are you following India right now? India obviously plays into the gold market. Um, they're the second biggest market. Um, so uh, they do have bearing on the market. I, I think uh, that's not a reason why all of us buy gold, is because India might buy more. Uh, but I, I don't think that some of the uh, regulations they've passed and some of the incentives to monetize gold and put in the bank account on our interest mm -hmm. Those have not worked in the past. Um, to date, they haven't worked. I, I don't think that's going to be a, a big determining factor of where gold goes. Now, what's your approach to investing in juniors right now? Ah, very good question. <laughs> juniors have obviously been decimated. Uh, just the XAU index, as most people know, is now below its 2001 low. And those are producing companies. Those aren't even the juniors. So, you look at any chart of any of the that represents the junior sector and it's been completely decimated. Mm -hmm. But there are good things happening. It's cleaning out the sector. The companies that probably shouldn't be around are going away or going into something different. Um, it's forcing companies to get lean again. And uh, uh, I, I think the, the reason that a lot of us buy into juniors is because they have that 10 bagger potential, even 100 bagger potential. Right. That's still going to be in play. It's just that our timeline for that has been delayed a little bit. So as long as you're buying enough of those and diversifying that, I, I wouldn't sell them. As long as it's a strong company that has cash in the bank and can get through this the, the trying period right now and has a quality asset with good people behind it, I do not think you should sell. I think you should hold on, ride the cycle out. How much are you investing in companies versus the bullion? Um, I'm personally like 50-50. I, I don't think, I don't believe in going all in stocks or all in bullion. I, I don't think that's appropriate for most people. And I think you need exposure to both. Um, the only stocks that I've sold have been ones that we've recommended in Casey Research when I was with them that we recommend they sell because there was some reason inherent to that company that they weren't going to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I've held all my positions and of course I've held my bullion. And uh, I think we're at a, a major buying opportunity a back up the truck moment here. If gold does break to a thousand and maybe overshoots to nine fifty or something like that, uh, I might be knocking on your to, to look under your couch cushions to try and find some money to buy more gold. Right, so. right, absolutely. Um, just as we wrap up, Jeff, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of catalysts out there right now for higher precious metals prices. Do you know of any? Are you following any? You know, what's your take there? Well, a lot of the people, mainstream buyers that bought GLD, when the Fed started printing all that money, uh, they thought that was going to lead to inflation. And then in 2013, early 2013, they said, we were wrong. Printing money doesn't cause inflation. So they bailed out and sold. And if you remember, in April 2013, that was the beginning of the first waterfall decline in the price. Right. So you have to look at what's going to attract that group back into the gold sector. Because all of us that are in the gold industry, we haven't sold anything. So what's going to bring these new people back in, the mainstream back in? And that could be anything. What I, what I think it's probably going to be is something big. Whether it's the start of inflation, whether it's uh, a currency breakdown somewhere, uh, you know, some uh, economy going bust, um, a depressionary event, mm -hmm. a stock market sell-off. Um, there's a lot of catalysts that, right. that, that could lead to the next bull market. But the bottom line is, regardless of how you feel about any individual catalyst, gold, bull, gold cycles. Bull markets, bear markets, bull markets, bear right. markets. So, it, you know, it's going to come around eventually and you just have to hold on and, and see it through. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, it was a pleasure having you on the show again. Thank you so much for stopping by. Great to be here. Oh,